Well, uh, good morning, everybody, and welcome. So let's kind of quickly talk about the agenda for this morning. Uh, we're going to really talk about the project management's impact on the bottom line of the company, which is to improve return on capital employed, ROCE, and TSR, which is total shareholder return. In order to achieve that business objective, uh, topic two talks about a structured project development and execution process, which allows effective communication between decision makers, multifunctional project team, and stakeholders. Just having a good process alone is not good enough, so item three talks about project management best practices, where we optimize safety, cost, schedule, and operability of any project. And finally, everything comes back to money, uh, total cost management. So we'll touch on planning, scheduling, estimating, monitoring, and reporting. So before we get going, just thought I'd give you a quick overview of the type of projects that uh, are involved in the energy industry. The first one here is an offshore platform in the uh, Newfoundland area in Canada where you have really a, the platform was designed to withstand an impact from an iceberg. A multi-billion dollar project has been operational now for well over 20 years. The next project is a floating production storage and offloading system. And this ship is, by the way, the size of a football field. And when the oil is produced from below the ocean, it goes in and where you see the red line is where the uh, this tanker would kind of come down to, and then, of course, another tanker comes to offload it, and this is an ongoing operation, production, and processing of the crude oil. It talks about all sands in uh, Canada, in Calgary area, up north, Alberta. Uh, these equipment there are just massive. As you can see here, this truck weighs 400 tons empty, which is, by the way, the weight of 200 full-size cars. And it takes a 400-ton load on top. So that's another 200 full-size car weight, total 800 tons total weight. And the tires on this truck are 12-foot diameter. This man is six feet tall, and he's about half the size of the tire. The picture shows you a shovel. This shovel scoops up 100 tons of this oil sand. The oil is trapped inside the sand, and it takes four scoops to fill up the truck. And this operation goes on round the clock, 24-7, uh, 365 days a year. Talks about the liquefied natural gas tanker. This is a project in Australia. The gas field was discovered offshore in the deep water in the ocean about 20 years ago, and the project started production just this year. Again, as you can see here, this helicopter coming in on the right-hand side, this is another size of a big football field. This slide really talks about a refinery and petrochemical complex. This is where we produce gasoline, diesel, jet fuel, uh, and of course, lots of petrochemical products, more than a thousand products such as rubber, plastics, we can go on and on that are come from the petroleum base. With that backdrop, let's uh, jump into the uh, presentation. So the first topic, project management's impact on the bottom line. Why is project management important to you or to the company? So we'll talk about improving the return on capital employed, ROCE, and total shareholder return, TSR. Look at this slide, business case for improvement. Why do we need to improve the project management skill? So improved capital stewardship, very critical. Uh, when I was employed at Chevron, we were spending about $40 billion a year on new projects worldwide. Granted, now with the price of oil down, the investment has dropped, but it's still in the range of $25 billion, big money. So first thing we're trying to do on the right-hand side is select better projects and then execute them with excellence so we get lower costs and we can do more projects for the same basket full of money. In spite of a huge capital budget, there's more projects in the hopper than we have money available. All this goes into improved return on capital employed, which gives you higher earnings growth for the company, 
higher market confidence on Wall Street, higher price-to-earnings ratio, and ultimately total shareholder return. Now, you'd be surprised, uh, ROCE, return on capital employed, is a common indicator of performance in the energy industry. So when we benchmark ourselves with ExxonMobil, BP, Shell, uh, all kinds of companies, ConocoPhillips, uh, ROCE is the indicator for performance of the company and ultimately the total shareholder return of the company. So project management's impact on the bottom line. Project management improves ROCE by increasing revenues. So if you build good projects, you increase revenues. Decreasing expenses, so we're talking about life cycle costs, operating and maintenance costs, and reducing capital employed. And all these three things go, revenues minus expenses divided by capital employed goes into calculating return on capital employed. It leads to pay startup performance. So as you can see on this slide, company X versus the pay startup company so we did some benchmarking with a company called Independent Project Analysis. They're out of Reston, Virginia. There were about 10,000 projects in the database. And what they showed is the gap between company X and the pay side of company was as much as 30% improvements in cost and another 30% improvement in schedule. So you can imagine what this could have an impact on the bottom line of the company. When you have a capital program of $40 billion and you're talking about even if you get a fraction of this savings on costs and schedule, you're talking about a big impact on the bottom line. So business case, let's move into how do we achieve that business objective to improve return on capital employed and total shareholder return. So we're going to get into Section 2, talk about project development and execution process which provides effective communication between decision makers, multifunctional project team, and stakeholders. Project de development and execution process, a process that facilitates the optimal use of resources, whether it be dollars, people, or technology, over the life of an asset or a project to maximize value. The, I mean, it sounds pretty simple. The desired outcomes are two. First of all, select the right projects by improving decision making. And then execute this project with excellence. And so you need to do both. First of all, select right projects and then execute with excellence. It talks about you need to make a high quality decision and execute with excellence. So you need to be in the top right hand quadrant on consistent success good projects, and good execution. Need to do both. So here is a level view of the uh, stage gate process. Phase one is identify and assess a business opportunity. Phase two, you select from alternatives. Doing nothing, by the way, is always an option. Expansion of a plant, uh, building a new facility, acquisition, divestiture, anything goes in phase two. By the end of phase two, the diamond you see there is where you have to select a preferred alternative. In phase three, you develop the preferred alternative for full funding. That phase three diamond says FID, stands for final investment decision. This is where you're really going to commit the big money. So phase one, two, and three could be anywhere from five to 10% of the project cost. The rest will be, of course, in phase four where you execute, go through detail, engineering, procurement, construction, and have a deliverable asset at the end of phase four. And phase five, operate and evaluate, take lessons learned, and say, hey, did we achieve the business object objective we set out in phase one? So again, very straightforward process, uh, but you know, not easy. It sounds easy, but not easy to implement on a consistent basis. The next slide really talks about influence of these different phases. The typical